This is a chart showing atmospheric CO2 concentration over the past 5,000 years. CO2 is short for carbon dioxide, a key greenhouse gas that drives global warming. As we can see, concentration levels fluctuated, it remained relatively stable until the Industrial Revolution. With increased human activity, there came a spike. With this spike in CO2 concentration has been an increase in global average temperatures. Today, the Earth is more than 1 degree Celsius warmer than pre-industrial times, and effects already felt. Australia is tonight braced for catastrophic and life-threatening conditions. The crisis killed and displaced three billion animals. Antarctica has just had its hottest day ever recorded. The earliest peak in 1,200 years. Scientists have linked this early bloom to global warming. Venice's mayor is blaming the worst flood his city has seen in more than 50 years on climate change. Scientists have warned, if we allow global temperatures to rise by over 1.5 degrees Celsius, we will be dicing with our planet's livability. Emissions don't stay just on top of the country that pollutes them. It travels around the world and it contributes. And so really we all have an obligation to address it, uh, and we all have an interest in avoiding those consequences. The common interest and obligation is there, but how should responsibilities be shared in a fair manner? Historically, developed countries have had far more emissions than developing countries. For instance, study shows that the US alone accounts for 25% of historical emissions, and countries of the EU, 22%. To address such issues, multilateralism and the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities point the way. And this, if you ask me, can only be done on the basis of genuine multilateralism, in which stronger countries live up to their responsibility for weaker countries as well. In 2015, countries reached the Paris Agreement, which sets the target of holding the global rise in temperature below 2 and preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. To achieve this long-term goal, Countries aim to reach global peaking of greenhouse gas emissions as soon as possible to achieve a climate neutral world by mid century. China, for example, has announced it will strive to bring carbon dioxide emissions to a peak before 2030 and become carbon neutral before 2060. This means the world's largest developing country will complete the world's most dramatic reduction in carbon emission intensity and realize carbon neutrality from carbon peaking in the shortest time ever. It's great that President Xi is making climate a priority and wants to work with other countries on this. Uh, you know, without the contributions of China, the many of the key ingredients like uh, the batteries and the solar power wouldn't be uh, so affordable. Something that differentiates China to me, if someone was to ask me this question in the US or in Europe, you know, how would I evaluate China? I would say as a high level statement, which is so important, I think, is I think China is inclined to act. China acts. And with China, you feel the, the speed. And that's, that's kind of like a habit. That's the nature of the Chinese market. So I think we, we see the results from that now. China's leader in so many areas. We know uh, renewable power generation like solar, wind, uh, batteries, electric vehicles. But globally, a lot still remains to be done. The Paris Agreement is an historic achievement, but the commitments made so far are not enough. And even those commitments made in Paris are not being met. At the recent Leaders' Summit on Climate, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has urged countries to make this a decade of transformation and to translate commitments into concrete immediate action. Global temperature has already risen 1.2 degrees Celsius, racing towards the threshold of catastrophe. We need a green planet, but the world is on red alert. Chinese President Xi Jinping, who also attended the summit, has called on the international community to work together to foster a community of life for man and nature with unprecedented ambition and action. 
，只要心往一处想，静往一处使，人类必将能够应对好气候环境挑战，把一个清洁美丽的世界留给子孙后代。Climate change is not just about polar bears vanishing or coral reefs disappearing, but about human survival and development. Time is not on our side. It's time to act before it's too late.